So about a few weeks ago, I posted my most recent data project on LinkedIn. It's about my job hunting journey and all of the data behind it. The real question behind this dashboard though is, what did it take to make this? In hindsight, it was pretty simple and pretty repeatable, which is great. So let's put our project manager hats on, take a quick step back and have a goal oriented approach to this. My goal with this is to teach a method of building a data dashboard that is repeatable and can be used in almost any circumstance that you might be in. So what exactly was my approach? Well, let's break this down into three main points. The first one is going to be to think about the stakeholders. So who is going to be seeing this? Who is going to be using this? So in this instance, it's quite simple. One is of course myself. Next is going to be LinkedIn users. So anyone who is just scrolling on LinkedIn, seeing posts their friends are liking. Third is going to be recruiters, hiring managers, people seeing this project on their timeline again. And also when I'm applying, it'll be on my website so they can see what exactly is going on here as well. And this is going to give me a better chance at landing my next role. Fourth will be friends and family. And five is going to be anyone who is interested at seeing what the job hunting experience has been like at an individual level at ground zero. And they're curious about what it's actually been like on that day-to-day -day level. What are the objectives of this dashboard? It is one to highlight the entire job hunting journey that I've been through. The process, my experience, what's going on in the market currently. Most importantly, it's to highlight what it's like for an entry level applicant. That's what I mainly am looking for. Uh, the max I'll typically go for is about two, maybe three years. So those are the roles that I have been applying to and what is going to be reflective off of the dashboard. And lastly, what is the final product going to be? What is the media? So for this, I've actually decided to go with Tableau this time, just to challenge myself uh, because I am actually more familiar with Power BI. So let's dive into the how to. So first off, we're gonna be gathering all of our data. Now in this instance, all of it is going to be pretty manual, pretty mundane. It's not going to be easy. Let's say that. So I'll actually be providing my own template on how exactly I collect all of this data. Here is an example of all of that. So I have a very simple, just company, position, city, and state. Also dive deeper into the data applied, company response, the current status, and also just where I'm at throughout the process. So after about a year and a half of job hunting, I've collected quite a bit of data. I am at 1100 rows, AKA 1100 different applications. I love the tech market right now. It's so good. It's so good. They ask you how you're doing, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. But it's interesting you can see all the companies I've applied to, where they're at, and what exactly is going on in my job hunting journey. Now that you have your data, what I recommend after this is to actually pick a template from Tableau. So what I personally love about Tableau is that they have a ton of resources and a ton of public dashboards that you can just take you can just pull from, which is really nice. So as you can see, when you go through Tableau Public, they have just a ton of just trending dashboards and different visuals that are really cool, very modern. What I really appreciate about this is that most of the time they are transferable. As long as you have a data set that matches what the dashboard is, that's all that matters. Speaking of, we're gonna be picking the criteria now of what template we're going to be looking for and what we need. So when we look at our data, we can see there's one date applied. In some way, shape or form, we're gonna want a line chart visual. So showing how many applications applications over time, typically a count of some sort. I also have the amount of phone screens, interviews, and final interviews. Those can all be KPIs at the top of the dashboard. As you can see, I'm already picturing what exactly it's going to look like in my head and what key insights that we can pull from this specific data set. We also have city and state, which is great. So we can also create some sort of map visual as well, some geographic type of visual. And next, of course, we have companies, so we can do count, but we could also dive a little bit deeper and see which companies I apply to the most. We can also do by city and by state, which companies that I personally apply to the most. So. These are all interesting things that we're gonna look for. So these are gonna mostly be bar charts, line charts, KPIs, and a geographic chart. So these are the four key criteria. So when you look here in Tableau Public, yeah, we got a lot of really cool visualizations. I love to just go through trending and see what's going on because typically if they're trending, that means they're doing well. This one has some good potential. This one also has some good potential. Also, the Minesweeper is crazy. Hey, yo, Minesweeper is wild. Wait, that's so cool. Wait, how do they do that? That's really cool. This one has a really good potential. So we can put the KPIs on here at the top and we all can also filter by the year. That's something that we have through our date. So this has a lot of potential. This one also has some potential. This one is okay as well. Ooh, here is a a really good one that we can use. So it's called the Superstore dashboard. It's nice. We can have, again, all of these KPIs on top and also just different visuals at the bottom. And what's cool about this is that you can also expand further and include your links to LinkedIn, or your other social media platforms, have a logo for yourself. And also you can highlight more filters and also show the data set as well, which is really cool. So these are all features that I really appreciate about this visual that I will utilize. So 
let's download this one right now. Let's get started. The next part about this is going to be the transferring of the template to match your data. This part definitely takes the longest. So a lot of this is gonna be reverse engineering and learning what's happening inside of the actual template and what the original creator was intending. But this is often the best way to actually learn. You're able to see someone's work and then kind of backtrack and see what they did. You get a better understanding of the software and the tools and what you're going to be doing and utilizing. I'm not going to bore you with those details in specific because going through that is pretty, it's not that fun. But here are my takeaways on how I did that smoothly. Number one is going to be match and replace as many data points as you can. That's going to be the key right now. Uh, one thing about Tableau and specifically I didn't know is that fixing the titles can be done through the page level and not the dashboard level. Here's an example of that. And lastly, just really make sure you understand the visuals that are already in the template. It'll make, again, your job and the process just so much easier when you have those exact visuals you already have in mind built into the template. You just save so much time. It makes it so much easier. So for example, I again, a lot of bar charts, line charts already built in. And then I also have the geographic map visuals. So I just had to do some minor tweaks that don't require a lot. Again, also just filtering as well. When you look into this level, exactly. I needed filters per year. So that's something that I can also build inside the dashboard easily. Again, all these great features that can be utilized. So as you can see, I pretty much did everything that I was highlighting before, what exactly I wanted to visualize. So I want to see first the number of companies by applications, number of applications by month and showcase that. I wanted the key KPIs on the top as well. And I wanted to be separated and segregated by the years. I'm going to actually do a quick data source refresh. One thing to specifically note while I'm doing this actually is as you can see, I am doing an extract. This is because I actually need to connect full list of all the US states because of that when you're connecting two tables, you don't want to do a live connection. Live Connection, of course, is always better. It's going to make your performance the best. But in this instance, we can extract is the only viable option when I'm connecting two tables, one on my local device and one via Google Sheets. So now we have the updated 11,000 total applications. So let's do a quick breakdown of what exactly I did. So one, I highlighted just the KPIs. So things that are the most important things you're going to just look at. This one definitely has more financial data. So you're going to be seeing these other values, which are just going to highlight the trends over time per KPI. I didn't think that was really necessary for my visual. So I took those out and instead I just added more KPIs in general. So for example, total applications and rejections when I'm ones I'm like waiting on the phone screens, amount of interviews I had, the final interviews, and also the return offers I had. This one was actually from an internship a few years back. So, and then also I took this geographic visual, used it here as well well to highlight where exactly I've been applying. You can also see when you dive deeper into here, you can see all the different cities that are involved. So there's Redmond, Seattle, and Cupertino, Cal like LA, San Diego, I had a couple in Chicago, I guess I didn't know that pretty cool, but you can just dive into these insights as well. Next is taking just these simple bar charts, doing a very simple just count per company overall. Same here, doing a line chart. It wasn't difficult. I'm showing also just the number of applications over time. You can see all the different spikes. And what's cool about this is that each spike and each high and both low are telling a story. Right around here in September, when I had that big surge, it was after summer. I was wrapping up some family things and I was able to get back onto job hunting and apply. I had a couple final interviews. Those didn't work out sadly. And I didn't hear back in for those and until about the end of December. After that, I had another spike, which I applied to a lot. But again, I had multiple final interviews, but again, sadly nothing. Right now, there's a bit of low because I've been focusing more on YouTube, but also I am working on getting some contract roles as well as helping a current startup in their data sphere and also their video sphere. So just trying to get some basic work. And I can tell multiple stories about how exactly like all this is happening, but it's really cool that I can just dive deep and break all this down by the year, see if my progress, how much I was applying to. It's crazy that in 2021, I only had 34 apps. 2022 is 314. Last year was 431. And this year I'm at 329. Each year it seems to be getting more and more. Friends of the game giving me shit about this, but that's why I'm the senior level job hunter. What's also cool about this is that you can link your Instagram and your other socials as well. And you can also dive deep and see the next page, which is going to be the job details page. So this is where I'm actually going to show that whole entire Google sheet, but only the most important parts of it. And you can see by the title what I've been applying to and where I'm at in the process. It's very cool. This visualization actually does a lot and it requires a lot of power. But what's cool about Tableau is that you can actually post all of these onto their Tableau public website. So you can actually have a whole just visualization portfolio just full of all your data viz projects and your dashboards. At the moment, this is the main one that I have. And what's cool is that it'll actually auto 
refresh your data set as well, which is really nice. And then what's also really cool is that you can of course download it, but you can also share all this through an embedded code or a link, which you can then post on your own personal website. So for me, this is where my website comes in, timju.com. When you go into my actual website, you can scroll down and it will be right here. Just give it one second. And there we have it. For this specific reason, I love using Tableau because they do make it very easy just to publish on to your website. Power BI sadly isn't this simple. It takes a little bit more finagling, but also Power BI is free. Tableau costs money or you need some sort of subscription to use it. Pros and cons for both, but yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is how I built my Tableau job hunting dashboard. Pretty simple overall. And what I love about this again is that it is repeatable. So if you have a different data set, you can pull that in, find that template, and then move forward and build your dashboard and quickly post it. So this is a great way to build projects and show your portfolio of work, how good you are as a data professional, and a simple way to really just build projects overall. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this is of some benefit to you. The job hunting market is tough, but you got this, we got this. We will find a new role for ourselves together. Oh man, I love data visualization. It's so fun, so interesting. Make sure to follow me on the socials and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.